So I figure I've been making whiskey cakes for my classes since probably around fall of 1983, which would mean that I've made probably between 100 and 125 whiskey cakes since I've been at St. Mary's. <laughs> probably served about 4,000 students. My father was a professor at the University of the South, and it's a very small college, a lot like St. Mary's, about the same size, maybe even a little bit smaller. And food, serving food to students, serving food to the community was something that was just part of what you did. So I probably got the idea of serving this cake to my students because that's how you build community. So at any rate, that's, <laughs> that's where the idea came from. So my mother gave me this recipe <laughs> years ago, but on condition that I don't share it with anybody. It's an old family recipe. My mother got it from a um, Belgian woman that she knew. When I was going to retire, I thought, well, maybe I can now share the recipe. And so I went to her and I asked for her permission. <laughs> and, I said, and she said, go ahead. And everybody will now learn just how ridiculously easy this is. So first of all, and here's so, um, as I say, a yellow cake mix, which you just buy anywhere. It's, 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 start that off. Four eggs. Um, the cake mix off, often, often asks for three, but um, four makes it better, we've discovered. And then um, half a cup of oil, vegetable oil, and half a cup of whiskey. I happen to be using a Kentucky bourbon for this one. I suppose coming from Tennessee, I actually probably should use Jack Daniels, but so mix it up. And then a cup of, of crushed walnuts. And a cup of coconut. And that's all there is to it. So pour it into a bunt pan. Bunt pan is always very appropriate, it seems to me, because my mother's family is German. My father's family British and my mother's family German. Unlike my father's family, they were not teetotalers. They were hard, so they would, uh, they would have no trouble with, the, with the, the whiskey in this cake. So there you have it. And then into the oven. All right, I think it's done. Nice and brown. So make sure the pan is well greased so it doesn't stick. So then there's the glaze part, and for glazing you can either um, um, glaze it as I'm going to do right now, or just pour the glaze in the pan. So I have a stick of melted butter, and then pour in a cup full of sugar. Half a cup of our whiskey. There we go, so both before and after. And then just spoon it over. And for this, as I say, you can either 
spoon it when it's in the pan. In some ways that's easier. Or you can do it like this. And what I'll do after, after, I, after I go through this process, I will then scoop the, um, the sauce out from the, what goes through the plate and re-scoop it over and do that a couple of times. So to get the full effect. And then it's, I, um, once it's soaked in a little bit, I put it in the refrigerator. I liked it's best if you um, serve it two or three days later, not right away, but afterwards. So there it is. <laughs> Ready for consumption. <laughs> In addition to using food to help build a community, one other thing I, re I realized that I made this cake, and that is, has always been to, to thank my students. Probably, I would say 50, 70, 5% of what I know about literature I have learned from my students. Between insights my students have had into literature, into grappling with questions they've had, um, and just watching them respond to literature has expanded my awareness of literature so much <laughs> that in some ways these cakes are an end of the semester thank you for everything that they have given me.